What's up YouTube Oliver here? In today's video I'm going to be showing you an app called Synergy by a developer called Seamless. Now what this is, is it's basically a virtual KVM switch, which means that you can use your keyboard and mouse between multiple different computers. Um, it basically works over the network, whether it be a wireless network or wired network, and it does mean that you can use them by a, with any computer so that you could have your keyboard and mouse connected to your main iMac and then you could have a MacBook next to it, a bit like my setup, where you may want to then just go straight between them. You could also use it with a Windows PC. It is compatible with any operating system and it does have a few additional features. So as well as being able to use the keyboard and mouse, you can also drag and drop files between the different computers and also use the clipboard. So I'm going to demonstrate a few of those features, but let's have a quick look at the pricing structure. So there are three different tiers. Um, there's the standard version, the pro version, and the enterprise version. And as you can see from this graphic here, the, the, there are a number of different features. Uh, the main difference between the standard and the pro version is the SSL encryption. So when you're copying your files across, they are encrypted and sent securely. And then the enterprise version, um, that's an annual license which you can pay and it also gives you more advanced support options if you're a large organisation. Um, so it is very good value. There's no monthly subscription or anything like that. It's a one-off lifetime payment. It's $19 for the standard version, which works out at around about £14 in the UK as, as of the time of filming this video. And it is $29, which is another $10 more for the Pro version. And I have been using the Pro version when I've been testing this out. I have found it to be excellent. I'll show you in my demonstration in a few moments what I actually think of it. Um, but let's let's have a look at some of the main features on the application settings window. Okay, so this is basically the first window that you get presented with when you open Synergy. It's very straightforward and what happens is as soon as you install it, you would download the installer from their website once you've paid for it. And it just basically runs through a standard installer and then this window comes up. And it's very straightforward. There's no complicated network settings to have to configure. Literally, it automatically assigns itself an IP address if you have it and you know, have it set to configure interactively. And there's no, no advanced settings or anything like that that you need to play about with. Now, I don't know how well you can see in the screen recording, but it does appear to me that the, it, the application window itself is slightly blurry. It's not a huge issue because it doesn't really affect the use of the application, but it's just the setting screen doesn't appear to be at an optim in an optimized resolution for retina displays. We come over to configure server, and this is the main um, configuration window that will appear. So you've got the option for all your different screens. Obviously, you can have as many different computers as you need to add on there. I've just got my iMac and my MacBook, and you can drag and drop these. So say your MacBook was up here. You just drag it to there, and that means if you move the mouse up to the top of the screen, it knows where, um, when you move it around, where the actual computer is positioned. In my setup, I've got it to the left-hand side of the iMac. Now, if you double-click, you can set up specific settings for each computer as well. So you can give it its name if you want to give it a different display name. Uh, you can add modifier keys, and that just means that if you press certain key combinations, it will only apply to that computer because obviously using your keyboard for both of them, you might want to quickly do something on one computer through a keyboard shortcut, and you can set those up. Um, you've got things like dead corners and fixes. All the dead corners does is it means, for example, you might say, I don't want the top right-hand corner to do anything, and it would prevent the mouse from going across the screen, I believe, if you moved it into that corner. Um, so moving along to the next tab up here, we've got hotkeys. I haven't set any of these up, but all it basically it, it means, similar to what I was just looking at before, you can set up certain keyboard shortcuts to toggle between sources and different things. You've got some advanced server settings here as well, and this basically lets you do different things. For example, you might want it to automatically switch after so many seconds or if you double tapped, because instead of having to move the keyboard and mouse between, for it to actually switch, which I'll show you in a second, you may want to just be, if you double click, it switches over to the other computer and you can set things like that. You refresh rates, you know, different mouse moves and screen savers. Um, the synchronized screen savers is a useful feature. From my testing, I found that it was a little bit glitchy. It was mainly just the fact that, um, because I think, and I think this is what it is, because I've got my Apple Watch set to unlock the screen savers as soon as they come on immediately, um, when I tried to then unlock the screensavers, it kind of, my MacBook froze because it couldn't unlock with the Apple Watch at the same time as the iMac. 
All it means is when you set the screensaver away on one computer, it comes on on all the computers in your setup, which is quite a nice feature. And as you can see, there's just a few other options there. You've got your drag and drop file transfers and your clipboard sharing. And again, you can set um, sort of dead corners via the server settings there. So what I'll do is I'll give you a quick demonstration so that you can see this. I'll uh, head over back to the camera so that you can see both computers side by side. Okay, so I thought the easiest way to show you a demonstration was to get the camera set up so you can see my iMac and my MacBook side by side. I have enlarged the cursor size slightly just to make sure you can see it clearly in this video. Um, so basically all you literally do once it's all set up is it's just a little uh, service running in the background in the menu bar and you just come straight across like this. And the keyboard follows the mouse. It's literally like the MacBook, as opposed to it being a separate computer, is like an, an external monitor for the iMac. It almost works that smoothly. And it's great if you're working between a laptop and a desktop, or, you know, two desktops even. You know, if you've got a Windows and a Mac side by side, you can just go between them and have one keyboard and mouse in the centre of the desk. And as I say, the keyboard follows the mouse. So let's just, for example here, I'm going to open up a notes application. So on my iMac, I could type a note. And as you can see, there it is. On my iMac, the keyboard's working as you would expect. If I come over to the MacBook here, let me just quickly open up with the same note. So this is the same note on my MacBook. As you can see, obviously it is synced over iCloud and everything, but let's just, literally, all I've done is my mouse is over on that screen and I can type. And it literally just, is seamless you know I'm on my on my iMac one minute now typing I just literally move move the mouse and it's pretty much instantaneous as you can see there's pretty much a zero lag now it does seem to only work with keyboards and mice a minute I have done some tests with a Wacom graphics tablet and it just seemed to mess it up slightly because of the way the graphics tablet is mapped to the iMac's display when you try and move it across to the MacBook it just doesn't work and um, but it works excellently with keyboard and mouse Obviously some of the other features are that you have a clipboard so you can copy and paste something from one uh, computer directly over to the other. Now obviously because of the way iCloud works these days you don't it's not hugely um, necessary to have that if you're using two Macs because you've got universal clipboard anyway and you've got iCloud Drive but I'll do a quick demonstration. I have noticed there is a bit of a lag when I do select and copy something there is a few seconds delay but I'll show you what I mean. So let's just copy this line from here. So it's copied onto my clipboard, and if I come over to my MacBook, I space down and I paste it. So it is it is quite quick, but there is a couple of seconds. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, it, I have noticed some, through some of the testing I've been doing in the past as well. And I'll, I'll do an example with the file drag and drop. So I've just got a picture here. It's the same picture that's on my desktop background. It was a photo that I took when I was on holiday. So I'm going to just drag and drop this from my downloads folder here over to the pictures folder on my MacBook. And you literally just click and drag and then when the cursor goes across it changes to a green plus. You can drop that in. And it does it does take a few seconds. Now it has from testing, it has been a little bit temperamental. There is sometimes um, a few seconds delay. It just depends. So just bear that in mind if you're going to be using this to copy and paste things all the time that it can be a bit slow potentially I mean it is useful for doing quick jobs but a better solution if you're going to be copying and pasting files is probably to use some sort of network drive or cloud service in my opinion if that's what you're mainly going to be using this for but generally it is a fantastic application for using your keyboard and mouse I haven't you know seen anything else that's so, so responsive uh, you might be familiar with the Logitech options software which comes with um, if you have certain Logitech keyboards and mice, which does a similar thing, but there's a, quite a delay when I was testing it out. It takes about five seconds when you move the cursor to the edge of the screen before it appears on the next computer, whereas it's literally instant. I mean, it is. It's very good performance. Obviously, it can depend on your network as well, but um, the majority of the times I've been using it, it does seem to work really, really well. It is a great tool and I would highly recommend it if you've got a laptop and a desktop or you know more than one computer because it, it just really cleans up your setup. You can have your keyboard and mouse in the middle and then you can really easily just go between the two of them. And if you're interested, um, the mouse that I'm using is the Logitech MX Master 2S. It is a fantastic mouse. Um, I may do a video on that in the future but I would highly recommend it. And I've got my MacBook, that's the 12 inch MacBook and it's on the 
uh, rain design and stand. I'll put all the links to these in the video description in case you're interested in my setup. But when you've got you know two devices together, it just it does work really well. And I would I would recommend it. Bear in mind from testing, it, sometimes it works really well. On occasional times, there are some glitches and some delays, but majority of the time, it does work brilliantly. And I would highly recommend it. Well, thanks for watching my review of Synergy. I hope you did enjoy it. I'll leave all the links to everything featured in this video in the description down below. If you like this video, don't forget to thumbs up. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. Well, thanks for watching. Bye for now.